Destiny, Bungie's first IP since Halo, is a controversial game to say the least. I actually agree with just about all of the reviews, but after six months, I still find myself coming back to it primarily because I love its first raid, The Vault of Glass. What can I say? The basic gameplay mechanics are rock solid, and I have a soft spot for co-op shooters. In my previous attempt at discussing this raid, I spent a long time talking about the connection between The Vault of Glass and Destiny's lore. Even though I really love this connection and feel it's definitely worth learning about, it's not made clear just from playing the game since the lore is disappointingly locked away in the grimoire only accessible from Bungie.net or the Destiny mobile app. However, the raid's co-op design and excellent approach to player education make it an unforgettable experience and I knew I wanted to feature it even before I knew the lore behind it. Now let's see what makes this raid such an interesting piece of game design. While the story and strike missions in Destiny are designed for a team of no more than three players and can often be completed alone without too much effort, the Vault of Glass raid was the first piece of content for the game designed for a group of six players working together. It centers on a bunker below Venus where an army of Vex is developing a super weapon that allows them to manipulate time and space against their enemies. These murderous robots, defying all shooter logic, actually have weak points that are not their heads, differentiating them considerably from the game's other enemy factions. As soon as you're dropped in, your first task is to open the door to the bunker. To do so, your team must build a spire by taking control of three plates in separate locations and preventing Vex Praetorian enemies from taking them back. You need to hold the plates for a couple of minutes in order to form the spire, so the distance between the plates necessitates that your team split up, ideally two on a plate. What's really important about this opening is how it immediately differentiates the raid from the rest of Destiny. Up until this point, every challenge in the game can be overcome alone by simply leveling up and muscling through. The opening of the raid is different because although the individual challenge at each plate isn't too much for one or two players to handle, they wouldn't reasonably be able to protect all three without help from teammates. It's designed to quickly and clearly teach you that no matter how strong you get, the best way to complete the raid is going to be with a coordinated group. Once you open the door, you're quickly presented new information in the form of a loot chest. While treasure chests are far from new in loot-based games, Destiny handles them a little bit differently than you might expect. Most loot chests in the game are randomly generated, the only consistent ones being the one in the first mission and the five gold chests each character can find once on each planet. In the raid, however, some loot chests are consistent, and by putting one in a spot you can't miss at the beginning, Bungie sets you up to watch out for them throughout the raid. This is simple signposting, but it's effective, and it's worth noting when a game chooses to show rather than tell. The next section of the raid has three phases, all set in this area called the Templar's Well. First, your group must defend three confluxes, glowing towers like the one you see here, and prevent approaching Vex from sacrificing themselves to them. If enough Vex get by you, your team is wiped out. Next, the team must destroy a series of oracles, these glowing orbs, that spawn around the area. If your group misses one, you all get marked for negation and will die if you're marked during the Ritual of Negation. The ritual is performed periodically during all three phases by the Templar, the boss you fight in the third and final phase once you get the relic shown here. You can cleanse the mark for negation during the first two phases by stepping into the pool of light in the center of the area and during the third phase by the player wielding the relic. The first two phases require your team to spread out to cover the entire area, leveraging the same coordination that you needed to open the entrance. Both start off small to allow you to learn each phase's mechanics before they increase the challenge. You start off by protecting one conflux, then two, and eventually three after you've had a chance to get used to the objective. Similarly, the first wave of oracles only has three in it, but by the end you need to destroy nine oracles to complete the final wave. This is smart design because in both cases you're able to learn the objective on a small scale that builds up as you gain confidence, steadily increasing the challenge as you get more capable. The starting scale is also in place to balance the fact that these mechanics are different from anything encountered in the main story or strikes. As such, the way you learn the mechanics of these encounters is hugely important. The first phase begins with the Templar's Ritual of Negation, but you don't have any context yet for what it does. When you first get marked for negation, however, either by a fanatic enemy or an oracle, the names of the mark and the ritual will form a link in your mind. It's safe to assume that something marked for negation won't survive the ritual of negation, so you can figure out what each does without being told or witnessing it through failure. Additionally, since the mark can only be cleansed during the first two phases by entering the pool of light, you can figure out that the relic can also be used for cleansing when it takes the pool's place before you fight the Templar. The pool itself is actually an example of really great signposting, as it's the brightest thing in the environment, drawing your attention toward it before you know it can cleanse the mark. 
finally, because the fight against the Templar doesn't start until a player picks up the relic, the game establishes a link between the two that can help in figuring out how the relic is necessary for defeating the Templar. The term for all this is conveyance, or the ability for a game to teach you through its mechanics rather than explicit tutorial. Destiny gives you the clues you need to find the relationships between these intentionally vague mechanics while leaving it to you to figure out how to use that information to form the complex strategies needed for success. This design is smart because it's consistent with the concept of the raid as the hardest content in the game while still giving you a push in the right direction to keep it from becoming frustrating. The fight against the Templar in the third and final phase is also really important when considering the raid as a co-op activity because it changes the way your group needs to work together. Once a player takes the relic, the game places more emphasis on having players in multiple roles than in multiple locations. Now your group is split between the relic holder, whose job is to periodically cleanse the team of marks for negation and break the Templar's shield, and the rest of the group who protect the relic holder, kill oracles when they can, and most importantly, damage the Templar when its shield is down. This is important from a design perspective because it adds variety to the gameplay and doesn't let you rely on what you already know. The next two areas are the Gorgon's Labyrinth and the Jumping Puzzle, and they're some of the most uniquely interesting content in Destiny. The Labyrinth features Gorgons, these blue glowing enemies that will wipe out your party if they see you. If you're caught, it's possible for your group to kill one with coordinated fire before it can kill you, but then the other Gorgons become more aggressive and tougher to take out. Instead of facing them head on, your best bet is to sneak around them. The challenge here is that at first you have no idea where to go and the exit isn't signposted at all. Therefore, your team needs to coordinate and communicate to find the exit without getting caught. After the maze, your team needs to leap across disappearing platforms to cross a huge chasm. Though the objective is self-explanatory, it's notable for how different it is from the rest of the game, especially since it leverages Destiny's different jumping mechanics across the Titan, Warlock, and Hunter player classes. Floaty Warlocks handle the puzzle differently than double or triple jumping Hunters, for example. Between the labyrinth and the jumping puzzle, you're forced to pay attention to the environment around you outside the context of battle, and it drives home the massive scale of the area as you descend to the final chamber. This last area is the raid's namesake, called the Vault of Glass for the crystal pillars at its rear and the crystal shards that hover in the air. Once you kill a gatekeeper enemy in the main chamber, you need to use sink plates like those at the beginning to open two time gates. On the left is a portal to the room's past guarded by Precursor Vex enemies, and on the right is a gate to its future guarded by Descendant Vex. In each portal, the relic returns after you kill another gatekeeper. Once they've both been brought to the present, you defend a final conflux like those in the Templar's Well to summon Atheon, the final boss. During the fight, Atheon will periodically transport three players through time where they take the relic and kill seven oracles that can now wipe out your party like the Gorgons do. Meanwhile, the rest of the team opens the respective time gate while fighting off waves of suicide bombing supplicant enemies. Once the oracles are destroyed, the team gets a 30 second power boost to damage Atheon, after which another three are teleported and the process repeats until Atheon falls. Whew! Okay, with that out of the way, this final stage is so interesting to me because it's a real final exam moment, making you leverage all the skills you've developed over the course of the raid. You can recognize elements from each section before it, such as sync plates, the conflux, the relic, and the oracles, and your team needs to coordinate players in different places and roles simultaneously. It's incredibly important because success in the fight requires the two most important parts of the raid's design, tight cooperation between the members of your group and a thorough understanding of mechanics introduced throughout the entire raid. When your group finally sees Atheon crumble, you know without a doubt that you have truly conquered the Vault of Glass. Now before we finish up, one of my favorite aspects of the way the Vault of Glass was designed on the whole is how much of it you need to figure out on your own. There's a reasonable expectation that you'll see the similarity between the sync plates at the start and the one you see in a story mission, but other than that, you have to figure out everything on your own and that's a good thing. Because the raid was designed to be the hardest piece of content at Destiny's launch and is intended for six players simultaneously, the difficulty in figuring out each phase requires teamwork beyond just what you need to do mechanically to beat it. You're clearly presented the most critical information, such as the timer on the damage buff in the final boss fight, but the game respects the intelligence of your team and challenges you to figure out just how to beat the tasks before you. The Vault of Glass is, without a doubt, one of my favorite gaming experiences of 2014. Its design is centered on the idea that it should be the hardest content in the game, requiring tight teamwork and constant learning and understanding of new mechanics, and it succeeds in these areas in spades. It's a complex piece of design, and getting this video where I wanted it has definitely taken a bit more patience and time than some of the other entries in this series. 
If you like co-op shooters, this is the rare occasion when being vexed is a good thing. Thank you for watching, and I hope you'll join me again next time for another great level in gaming.